Welcome to Anchors Away, a podcast for boaters. As a marina owner and Freedom Boat Club franchise owner on Lake George, I get to see every day the joy that boating brings to people's lives. There's nothing like seeing the smiling faces headed out for a fun day on the water and the experiences we help provide and memories we help make as people disconnect from their busy lives and reconnect with family and friends. Our podcast features conversations with boating experts and industry leaders where we discuss things like how to get into boating, industry trends, boating destinations, tips, tricks, products, and more. From beginners to experienced boaters, we hope these conversations will inspire you to get on the water, spend more time on the water, and introduce others to the boating lifestyle. I recently had the pleasure of speaking with Graham Bouch, managing broker of Green Yacht Sales. Graham is an avid sailor and joined the boating industry after stints as a consultant, educator, getting his MBA, and then shifting course and starting the brokerage business before launching his own venture. Before striking off on his own, Graham distinguished himself with a variety of performance awards as a broker, including highest number of sailboat sales out of 300 sales reps nationwide. Green Yachts began in 2019 and is dedicated to supporting the electric boating community on the water by selling, servicing, and advocating electric-powered boats. Green Yachts aspires to helping customers who want the benefits of electric propulsion and who want to enjoy inspiring, well-made, award-winning boats while connecting with like-minded boaters. Graham and I discussed what drove him to focus on electric boating, design and technological advances and needs, what consumers can look for in the future of electric boating, and more. Enjoy! Graham, thanks so much for joining me today. I know uh, it's a busy time in the new year, and, and I'm really excited to have you for a few reasons. Uh, the first is, you don't know this, but out of the, I don't know, 40-something episodes I've done, uh, I think three of the top five are the electric uh, episodes I've done, so definitely an interest in the space from people that listen to this. Um, and, and second, it's a space I'm really personally very interested in as uh, an electric boat owner for our boat club. and a uh, dealer of electric motors, you know, it's definitely a space I'm excited about and speaking to someone who's really become an expert in the space in, in the last year, something I'm really looking forward to. So thank you for hopping on. My pleasure. Glad to join you. So before we get into boating uh, and looking at your bio, I, I noticed that uh, the green environmental space is something that kind of you trace all the way back to college with uh, an environmental studies major and participating in, in some environmental clubs. So where did your interest in, in the green space come from? Uh, I'd have to say Kermit the Frog. <laughs> okay. I remember uh, when I was six years old, seeing what we used to have on TV, you know, called a public service announcement. And Kermit the Frog was walking along the river and saw a piece of, piece of trash, frowned, but, you know, it was still a nice day, so he kept walking along, and then he saw another piece of trash, and he frowned, and then he saw another, and he just felt really down. Why are people doing this to the river? And I remember standing up and saying to the TV at six years old, that's not right. <laughs> and uh, I think it's always been a strong ethos for me, and I think back then, uh, it might have been maybe not something that was widely held. And I think the thing that is wonderful is that more and more and more people are seeing the importance of you know, being sustainable and green, both from a you know financial perspective as well as a planetary perspective. That's great. I, I did not expect a, a Kermit the Frog answer. That's that's a first in the you know forty something episode. So it's no, it's interesting that I mean it really does go go that far back and, and something that's been a passion of, of yours uh, pretty much your whole life. So I mean it speaks to the passion that you bring to the work with with Green Yacht. So you know uh, along the times of getting into uh, the environment, did you get into boating at, at six years old too? Was Kermit doing any boating episodes that inspired you? <laughs> Well, you know, I grew up boating, um, less sailing, more canoeing and uh, uh, power boating. But yes, I grew up uh, on the water. And, you know, that's an important part uh, for every boater, right? We are out there so blessed to be having a calm morning with the, you know, the mist rising off the lake or the ocean. I mean, it's beautiful. 
where we get to vote. And it is important to remember that it doesn't stay beautiful unless we, you know, we voters take responsibility for doing our part. Where, where was that that you grew up with, Buddy Water? I mean, you know, my grandparents had a, 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 a place on Lake Kelly in Michigan. And then I did a lot of voting in North Georgia, where I grew up. Are you still an active voter there? Is that where you're located now? No, I'm in San Francisco. Um, and this is uh, very much a sailing town. Yeah, yeah. And do you have a sailboat of your own? Uh, not anymore. Uh, I used to have one in the Chesapeake, um, uh, where I did a lot of sailing. And um, not right now, because all of what I'm doing is invested in green yachts. Yeah, yeah. Was the conversion, you know, at the Chesapeake from being a power boater at a younger age to sailing an environmental decision or more a factor of the boating that was available to you uh, at the time? No, it was a choice. Um, so my wife and I, uh, sailing really combines what we like to do together. You know, she likes to uh, be a little bit more relaxed and I like to be a little bit more active. And we both get to do that in sailing. So it, it, it's been something that we've enjoyed together. And, you know, as any sailor will tell you, one of the best parts of sailing because we've gotten so conditioned to sailing with a diesel engine that any sailor will tell you that one of the best parts of sailing is when they turn the diesel engine off. And all of a sudden you hear the ocean and the wind and you take a deep breath and you say, this is why I'm doing this. And it's that doing something that requires skill, doing something that's not just going out and, and being on board, but actually harnessing the wind. That's what appeals to us. And, and at Green Yachts, you know, there's, there's a lot, a, a big contingent of folks who are going electric who aren't doing it for the environmental reasons. They're doing it because they don't want the noise or the fumes or the maintenance of a diesel engine. They want that beautiful, quiet, natural sailing experience at all the time and not just when you turn off the diesel engine. Yeah, with our with our electric boat, and it's not a sailboat, um, but it had a little, you know, eight horsepower equivalent electric motor on it. And one of the best comments we got on it was it's got all the benefits of sailing. It's quiet. You don't smell anything, uh, except you don't have to do the work of sailing. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's right. Um, and that's why, you know, it's of you know benefit to both power boaters and sailors um, because it's a, just a better experience. I mean, that's why like, if you ask anybody with an electric car, would you want to go back to a gas car? 99% of them say no way. And they're not saying no way because of, you know, all of them are, have this utmost commitment to the difference in uh, impact of an electric versus a gas, it's a better driving experience. Mm -hmm. And for those, there are more people who are familiar with an electric car and can relate to that. And it's the same on the water. It's a better boating experience. And the other thing I would add for sailors is that we believe that the diesel engine has been a crutch that people turn it on when the winds drop or the winds are, you know, maybe a wee bit too strong. And it's caused a lot of sailors to lose some of their sailing ability because they have this crutch in the diesel engine that they just turn on. And I've noticed that since I've started sailing electric boats, I've become a better sailor because I sail more and don't use the crutch of a diesel engine. You know, I have the electric, I can turn it on when I need, but, but it, it's not, it doesn't have as much range as a gas or diesel engine. And so you use it less <clears throat> and using it less makes me a better sailor. So your, your career took, uh, 
for a kind of corny uh, sailing joke. Took a few tacks to get to where you are now. Um, <laughs> tell, tell me a little bit how you ended up uh, starting Green Yachts. I got my MBA, and years later, I looked back at the essays that I wrote when I applied. And they were about helping the environment through business. And while I'd done some interesting and good things, I hadn't been doing that. <clears throat> and, you know, the electric car revolution had already gotten going. I wasn't really going to make a difference Sorry, there. Again, but electric boating hadn't yet taken off and still hasn't really taken off yet. And, you know, I enjoyed boating. I really valued going electric. I joined a brokerage, you know, a regular boat brokerage, gained enough industry experience so that I could step out on my own and do green yachts. You know, that was the game plan back when I became a boat broker. And when I had enough experience, I stepped out on my own and am really excited to be playing a role along with others in bringing about the electric revolution on the water. You know, joining folks like Dan and Keek of Sailing Uma, you know, and, and the folks at Ocean Volt. I mean, and there's so many people who have been beginning to build this movement. And it's great to be part of this community uh, advocating the electric revolution on the water. What trends have you seen in electric in the last year? And, and what are you seeing right now going forward? I see people who want to go electric and are unrealistic about energy management on board a sailboat. And, and so I see people not succeeding when with just a few changes, it would be easy for them to succeed. I'll give you an example that, you know, and I think it's really important that anybody who is interested in electric propulsion, you know, that, that we talk about this, not in a salesy way, not in a, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, everything's shiny and rosy, but that we are, have honest conversations because that's what set people up to succeed. And that's what we do when we help people get a boat at Green Yachts. We really want to make sure that we're setting them up to succeed. So recently, um, you know, a, a very well-respected sailor by the name of Jimmy Cornell set out to do a circumnavigation of the, of the uh, planet in a uh, carbon neutral journey on an electric sail. Jimmy put a lot of energy intensive systems on the boat you know, electric heads, electric winches, uh, obviously all the navigation equipment. But the big thing that really did it in was a microwave oven and an induction cooker. So those things use a lot of energy. And there's no way that hydro regeneration can put enough energy back into the battery bank when you've got massive energy draws being used frequently uh, for life on board. And so, you know, sailors either need to get a DC marine generator that puts uh, energy into the battery bank, and then that gives them the ability to put whatever system they want on board uh, and have the energy supply to, to handle it. Or they need to think about being really efficient and probably not electric cooking right now. You know, if you sailing Uma and the rigging doctor, uh, both of which, you know, Dan and Keegan, and Irby and Maddie have sailed across the ocean in electric boats, use alcohols, alcohol stoves. I think we all would like to get past uh, uh, fuel stoves, but right now, electric cooking is inefficient. Now, if we did things like used a solar cooker or a pressure cooker, things that use something other than electricity, then you, know, you could have electricity supply your cooking implements. But, but you cannot just take an induction cooker stovetop, 
which was not designed to be energy efficient, put it on a electric boat with, you know, good but limited um, energy generation and make it sustainable. So it, it's about when you get an electric boat, it's really important to talk to folks who know what electric sailors have been doing, what's worked and what's not worked so that you set your boat up to succeed. Because what we want more than anything is sailors on electric boats to succeed. And we do everything we can to help buyers uh, and sailors succeed, not just get a boat, but succeed as electric sailors. And part of that is energy management on board. And part of it is uh, developing one sailing system. If you ask Dan and Kika on Sailing Uma, they will tell you that because they had an electric motor on board, they became much better sailors than if they were just cruising around in a diesel engine that they turned on. Yeah, that's a really interesting perspective. I'd never really thought of that. How would, how would you recommend someone talk to those boaters and, and connect with like-minded people who maybe have done those conversions to, to get a sense of what their expectations would be, learn some best practices? You know, Are there specific forums or groups or anything that, that you've found really useful? You know, there, there are a number of uh, forums out there, but there's also a lot of armchair quarterbacks in those uh, forums. You know, I'm a, I'm a DIY guy by nature, but I would say this is an area where I would talk to somebody who is a professional rather than asking people on the forums whose background you don't know you know and 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 if you really want to learn about electric sailing there are two youtube channels uh uh sailing uma and the rigging doctor and they both spend quite a bit of time talking about how they make their sailboat uh sustainable in terms of energy in addition to sharing their wonderful journeys, you know, around Norway or the Caribbean. Um, but, but they also, if you watch, give a lot of advice, maybe not direct advice, but they, but if you watch those channels, you will learn about people who are doing it right. Uh, on electric sailing. And it's, it's, it's probably more helpful than, you know, the people on forums who, are offering their opinion. Talk me through the process a little bit at Green Yacht. If I call you and you know I, I want to really start exploring, one of the things I've liked is just that you're you know brand agnostic. You give kind of a, an unbiased opinion on the best way to do it. And so walk me through what what that process is like if I call you to uh, to get started sure. on that. Well, I, you know I wouldn't say we are brand agnostic, um, and I'll. Uh, um, I'll get to that in a second, but where we start, it's really all about you. So, you know, if you called us and were interested in, in electric boating, we'd first want to know all about you, uh, your boating background, what your boating goals are. And, you know, we, we, we really need to dig into that. Once we know what your goals are, what your background is, you know, what your, your technical knowledge is, your, your ability to tinker with things, um, then we can help you think about the different components of a boat as well as uh, the electric propulsion. So it's not just thinking about should I go electric or not or which electric system to get. It's, you know, it's the whole boat around it. Um, that also matters. So, so first is you, you know, second is thinking about boat design. And the other thing, going back to me saying I'm, I'm, I'm brand agnostic, I'm not because in both sailboats and powerboats, they have, because of the internal combustion engine, not been designed for great ability to sail. So they look pretty and voluminous at the dock, but they are not uh, 
really designed to sail. I mean, I know too many sailors on some brands of boats that say it's really hard to sail below 10 knots or above 20 knots. Well, there's not that much time out on the water where you're going to be in that 10 to 20 band. And, you know, there's a, one brand that uh, back in 2011 actually took out the insulation around the refrigerators because it didn't help sell boats at a dock. And, hey, there's a diesel engine in. If the boat's using too much energy, they'll just turn on the diesel engine, run the alternator, uh, uh, you know, juice the battery back up, and they're fine. So the insulation around the refrigerator, eh, that's something we can get rid of. And I think that electric boating requires a rethinking in the marine industry. And it's not just boaters who have had a crutch in the form of an internal combustion engine, but the manufacturers as well. And so there are some manuf boat builders that make great performing, great sailing boats. And that's important to electric propulsion for, for two reasons. One, if it sails better, you're going to be able to sail more often, which isn't, the, isn't that the point of why people buy a sailboat. But, but still, it, it enables you to sail uh, more often in more winds. Uh, and the second thing is, is a, uh, a boat that performs well in sailing actually uses less energy for the electric propulsion as well. So, you know, we work with a couple of manufacturers like Arcona and Salona that make boats that sail really well. And that means that you can use it for sailing more often. And when you do use the electric, it's more efficient. And the same is also true in power boats. So, you know, power boats use a lot of energy uh, to get to planing speed. And there's a lot of electric power boats out there that say they have a 60 mile nautical range or a hundred mile nautical range or whatever it is, but that's at like four or five knots and nobody buys a power boat to go four or five knots. Um, you know, we represent a, a boat called Candela, which is a 25 foot uh, power boat that literally at 16 knots picks up out of the water on hydrofoils so that you're not displacing water at higher speeds. And what that means is the Candela has the exact same range at 23 knots as it does at six knots, which is unheard of for a boat. And that is part of making electric work is you know a high performing boat. I mean, Candela is an incredible electric boat, but it's also an incredible boat beyond the electric. Well, I think, and, I think we could do a whole other episode on hydrofoils then. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think hydrofoils are going to be on a lot of monohull sailboats and power boats uh, 10, 20 years from now. And I think part of the reason why is electric propulsion is going to place more emphasis on efficiency. And, and that efficiency has been lost by boat manufacturers because of the internal combustion engine. Um, so I, I see electric, not just as a move forward, you know, with the electric propulsion, but also like a return to our roots as boaters, where we build and use great performing boats, whether it be sail or power boats. How do you think the adoption picks up? What does the industry do? What do manufacturers need to do to start to increase the adoption of this type of boating? I think people need to experience it. There are not a lot of opportunities to experience electric boating. So that's why what you're doing with the Freedom Club and having an electric boat available is one of the biggest things that needs to be done to spread the electric revolution on the water because once people try it, they say, wow, that was really cool. You know, it's like the experience of sailing without having to sail, you know, or, or whatever it is. More people need to experience it. And so, you know, the more we could get people who wanted to help us build the electric revolution, getting a boat and putting in a charter fleet, um, that multiplies the number of people experiencing electric and thinking about it and feeling comfortable thinking about it themselves. What about on the infrastructure side? Do you see anything that 
is being done or needs to be done. You know, out in Tahoe, they just put an EV charging station in at Homewood Marine with the help of uh, Nautique for their electric boat. And so as a marine owner, you know, one of the things I'm starting to think of is what, and as a Tesla owner who, you know, can charge my car up in the garage overnight, it, what, what needs to be done as a marina or as a, you know, provider of boating access infrastructure-wise to help people more strongly consider electric? Well, that would be, you know, I'm going to leave that up to you because I don't own a Marine and you have more uh, insight into that than I do. Uh, I would say that the vast majority of infrastructure is already there for sailboats because you get to the dock and you plug in a short power. So it's, it's not an infrastructure issue. It's more of a, a boat design issue, you know, not pulling the insulation out of the refrigerators. So given that I think more effort needs to be done on, you know, boat design, I still think that there are opportunities with marinas to facilitate electric, though, again, the, the, a lot of the infrastructure is there because we already have plugs for all of our boats. But if I were a marina and I saw that there was going to be an increasing amount of electric demand, um, I might start building my um, covered slips with solar with solar panels and creating the way to shade the boats and protect the boats while also generating energy for the boats. And then for your or your more energy intensive boats, having uh, a fast charger. You don't need it at every slip, but you might need a place where you can do a high speed charge if you want to go back out on the lake. You know, you had a lot of runs water skiing in the morning, and then you want to go out and do some more runs in the afternoon. That I think one high speed charger would probably work for Marina because otherwise the short the power cords at each slip allow it to be charged overnight. Yeah, and, and particularly, you know, I, I think of if you're going out you know, I'll use the Chesapeake as an example, maybe, and you're doing a long sail and the whole dreaded range anxiety, you know, comes into play. But you know that, you know, you sail 15 miles down the Chesapeake and there's another marina that has a charger. And then 15 miles later, there's another marina that has a charger and you just get a, a bigger comfort level of your ability to do all the things you want to do on the boat without having that anxiety of being stuck without a charge somewhere. I, to use that example, I don't think anybody should have range anxiety in that situation because even at low winds, you can break out a code zero or a Jenniker or a Spinnaker. And I find that I keep going back to them, but Dan and Kika on Sailing Uma think nothing about throwing their code zero up or their Spinnaker up. But you talk to your average sailor and they will say, oh, you know, I, 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 the spinnaker makes me nervous. They may not want to admit it because there's, you know, I guess people might not look positively on that. But most sailors are nervous about using anything other than the jib and the main. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it does go back to it does go back to in improving the the technical sailing skills that you know you talked about first and it's just that perspective really has never really dawned on me but you know what it, what a difference it makes if you are comfortable with those sailing skills that that the need is a lot less so you know on the on the boats that we sell in five knots of wind you can sail you know depending on the boat anywhere from three to four and a half knots of speed but Let's say there's two knots of wind, you know, maybe being comfortable going at a slower speed for an hour or two until the wind picks up as part of thinking like a sailor, not thinking like a driver. Right. <laughs> and if you think like a sailor, 15 miles should never create range anxiety. So we're coming up on, uh, well, over a half hour now already. So probably going to wrap it up here. And I guess, you know, what are you seeing in the next year, two years, as the biggest opportunity for someone like yourself or a manufacturer of electric green sailboats? You know, where, where do you see the biggest opportunity right now coming from? Let me say one other thing and then I'll answer that question, which is 
I would love it if all boaters out there started converting to electric, right? But the one piece of advice I would have for them is that too many people doing that skimp on their batteries and, you know, because of cost, you know, batteries are not uh, inexpensive, but that sets people up to fail because they don't have like a moderate amount of range. They have no range. You know, if you put half a gallon of fuel in your gas tank and then went out on the lake, you'd probably say that engine didn't have much range either. <laughs> so if you're converting, do not skimp on the batteries. It is the number one mistake that folks doing conversion do because batteries are, are expensive and or heavy. But if you do not have the range to fight a headwind, then you don't have enough range when you need it. So that would be my advice to um, those converting. But if I had to look at what trend I see, there's, there's two. One is making boats more efficient, like the Candela hydrofoiling, like Arxon, a 45 to 85 foot boat being made out of aluminum, which um, makes it durable and lighter like hydrofoils. The other thing, specifically in regards to electric propulsion, there's two trends that I see. One is hydro regeneration. So in sailing, when you're sailing along, you can put the, the electric motor in hydro regeneration mode and put energy back into the battery bank from the mechanical spinning of the propellers in the water transforming that energy back into chemical stored energy in the battery bank. So one trend is improving the capacity of hydro regeneration to put energy back in your battery bank. Ocean Volt recently launched their newest product called a servo prop, and it generates 300% more energy into the battery bank than their uh, sail drive, their SD prop. So that's a massive improvement in hydro regeneration. So that's key to making electric sailing work. The second is putting in two motors. So if you think about a sailboat, most uh, sailboats have a diesel engine right under the stairs of the companionway uh, hatch as you go between the cockpit and the, and the uh, swan. So with electric, but, and the reason why they're put there is because uh, a diesel or gas engine is too big to go anywhere else. And, uh, and so, but electric, the motors are smaller. So there are now two sailboats in the world that I know of under 50 feet that are monohulls. This is actually more common on catamarans because they have two hulls. But in a monohull, there are now two sailboats in the world that have twin electric motors. So one to port, one to starboard. And uh, one of them is an Arcona owned by a private owner in uh, the United Kingdom. The other one is the Salona S460 that uh, is a new model launched by Salona that Green Yachts is bringing to the United States. And so I sailed on this twin electric motor for the first time in December. This is new, and it is a game changer for sure. The reason why is twofold. First, with twin motors, you hydro-regenerate hydro twice as much energy into the battery bank. So if you have a 15-kilowatt motor or two 8-kilowatt motors, you have about the same amount of power, but you have twice the hydro-regeneration, and it really makes a difference. So that's one. The second is that it eliminates the need for a bow thruster because you've got incredible maneuverability in the marina. And because the motors fit under the aft cabin berths, whereas the diesel engine does not, this is something that is only possible with electric motors. And these two trends, twin electric motors and better hydro regeneration, are making it so that electric sailing is far more viable because you can regenerate your range much more quickly. Very cool. And, and you said I wasn't going to learn anything. <laughs> well, I'm not one of those brokers. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, this was great. I really appreciate it. A lot of great information and a lot of exciting stuff coming up in the in the year ahead for you. So, uh, again, yeah. I appreciate the time and look forward to uh, staying in touch and following all your success. I hope you enjoyed that conversation. He's a tremendous resource when it comes to electric boating and uh, boating in a way that really minimizes the impact on the environment. You can visit Graham at greenyachtsales.com, and I do highly recommend it. Uh, We we touched on brand agnostic, and although he said they are not brand agnostic because they rep specific boats that they feel are designed for electric, the thing I really like is he is not your typical salesperson who is trying to push you into a boat that he thinks uh, he wants to sell you. Graham really gets to know his customers and gives them really candid feedback about what's going to work best for them. His goal and mission is to put people in the best electric boat situation that he can and make sure that they are successful doing it to help further this part of the industry. Until next time, happy boating.